playing trade guitars is giving away this Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul to one of you. How to enter? Subscribe to Playing Trade Guitars on YouTube and we'll give it away when we hit 50,000 subscribers. Hey, welcome back to Playing Trade Guitars. I'm John, that's Zach behind the camera, and this is Playing Trade Guitars where we play it and trade it. I got to look at, take apart, and play the Fender Player Series Strat. This is a bestseller at $849. This one sports a Powell Ferro fretboard. It's also available in Maple. I'm going to tell you all the things you need to know that I learned from taking it apart on the bench, plugging it in, and playing it. And at the end, if you'll stick with me, I'll give you its final grade that you can compare across all of our guitar demos. At the top, if you're in the market for any new gear, do us a favor, click to buy using our link in the description. When you buy gear using our link, it supports our channel directly. Also, make sure you're in it to win it. We're giving away a Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul when we hit 50,000 subscribers very soon. Sign up link below as well. All right, without further ado, let's kick it off with some of the top things you need to know about the guitar specs, what we found out under the hood while we were on the bench pulling it apart. Number one. It's got a Powell Ferro board. There's a few options these days that are considered rosewood alternatives. And these include Indian Laurel and Powell Ferro, which is generally a more budget, cheaper feeling looking wood. And I will tell you that while the Strat comes in two configurations, maple, which is just gonna be classic maple, it also has the Powell Ferro. And in comparing it to another guitar, you can watch our video on the Silver Sky, the Silver Sky comes with real rosewood, so I took a keen interest in comparing the actual Powell Ferro board to the rosewood. And also, a big plus though, is that it has a satin finish on the back of the neck. I really did enjoy the smooth playing experience of a satin finish. Ours came straight from the factory, and I will say the guitar did need setup. When it came out of the box, of course these are made in Mexico, so climate adjustments can be necessary and player adjustments can be necessary as well. This guitar in particular though was pretty bowed in, so I did have to tighten the truss rod. I lowered the saddles a little bit because even after I adjusted the truss rod, the strings were pretty high off the board, surprisingly. And then number three, I found that the trim itself was not the most stable. And in fact, the strange thing was the trim arm actually didn't want to stay in place. When I screwed it, it was either too tight or, or too loose based on where it should be when you're holding onto it. So the threading seemed just a little bit off, which was a little strange playing it. You should also know that the overall construction was very good. I did not have any quality control issues with respect to the frets or really anything else other than setup, which I was able to correct easily using the tools that they included. You should also know that there's no gig bag or case included, so you'll wanna get yourself a case for the guitar. And under the hood, when we looked at the electronics, I was impressed with the Alnico 5 pickups. Flipping on the multimeter, we'll get a reading on these Alnico 5 pickups. Position one, bridge, 8.0. Middle read 7.4. Neck reads 6.9. Position two will be 3.9. And position four at 3.6. In addition to the construction, I thought the playability was fantastic as well. It has a modern 9.5 inch Fender radius, so that'll be very much what you'd be used to playing any other modern Fender, and that's a good selling point too, especially if you're getting started with guitar. Last thing from pulling it apart that you need to know, there's no additional switching. A lot of guitars on the market right now, especially at this price point, will offer additional features. This is really going to be meant for somebody looking for a classic Stratocaster configuration with three single coil pickups, the traditional controls, five-way selector switch, all those are traditional. There's no additional bells or whistles unless you upgrade to the Player Plus guitars or one of the configurations that sports a humbucker, which is also available. I pulled the guitar apart. I put it back together because the most fun part, of course, is plugging it in and letting it sing. You can hear the pure sound of these Alnico 5 pickups. <laughs> And then I fired up a Tube Screamer and a Deluxe Reverb amp to hear how the guitar sounds when you push it a little harder and to give you a little more context on the sounds.
finally, the fun part, I put it behind a track and let it sing. So let's hear the full performance. And remember, following this, I'll give you my final grade on the guitar and tell you about the weaknesses as well. <laughs> All right, man, it is always fun playing a Fender. Uh, strats are obviously so popular and this really nails the Strat tone. Really can't go wrong with this. Uh, the strengths, uh, standout strengths would be the overall playability. I thought it was a very playable guitar. I like the satin finish on the neck. I like that it's modern Fender specs, things like nine and a half inch radius. It makes bending and playing all over the guitar very easy. I also thought a strength uh, was the sound of the, those Onico 5 pickups. They had a nice voice to them. Let's move on though to some weaknesses of the player strat. Number one, I wish they wouldn't use Powell Farrell. I don't think it's a very good Rosewood alternative to tell you the truth. I don't think it feels great and it even looks a little bit rough and raw around the edges. It just doesn't have the look of a great piece of Rosewood or even a preferable Indian Laurel in my opinion. The other weakness to me was tuning stability. The trem, I had a lot of issues fighting with not only the position of the actual trem bar, it either locked up on me too soon, not giving me enough room to be able to play the guitar easily. Or it just generally wouldn't stay in tune after stretching the strings quite a bit. Uh, one piece of advice is just to consider locking down the trim on the Strat if you don't find yourself using the bar. It'll make your life a lot easier. The controls felt a little bit unsure of themselves. What I mean by that is when I would have to reach down and use the five-way selector switch, it doesn't have a good click in between positions, and it can feel a little bit weak or unsure of itself, making you feel unsure of yourself with what pickup selection you're actually clicking into. So I thought they could have probably dialed up the quality on that switch as well. Final couple of weaknesses I've got to note. It doesn't come with a case. It doesn't come with a gig bag of any kind. At this price, I really think that Fender should at least include a basic gig bag to protect the guitar. And the last weakness is I have to highlight the fact that the setup was pretty far out there. I definitely can give an allowance for regional shifts in climate and player preferences. It is kind of personal and what your 
setup preferences are. But in this case, it was so far out with the height of the strings and the adjustment on the truss rod that I really had to do quite a bit. Luckily, it wasn't hard uh, to do that, but it did come out of the box not really ready to play, in my opinion. All right, with that said, let's move on to the final grade. I look at three main categories and I come up with a score that you can use across our channel going forward when we review a guitar. And I look at three main categories, overall playability, overall sound, and overall value. Because if you're in the market to buy a brand new guitar, you wanna make sure you're getting enough for your money, right? Well, I broke it down, I crunched the numbers, and at the end of the day, I give the Fender Player Strap a 76%. What pulled the score down a little bit in addition to the weaknesses that I already listed really comes down to value. And I think what's happening with the Player Strat is that there are other alternatives, one being the Paul Reed Smith Silver Sky, you can watch that demo, which is just so good at the same price that it really makes you question why they can't give a little bit more in terms of value on the Player Strat. The other competitor to the Player Strat is actually Squire Classic Vibe. So under Fender's umbrella, the Classic Vibes are so good that it's really gotta give you pause and say at half the price, if I'm looking for a solid Strat at an entry level price, maybe I can save some money and look at the Classic Vibe. Uh, those two can have some setup issues. You gotta make sure you get a good one out of the box. But I will tell you, it does make you question value when you look at something either as good as the Silver Sky or as decent and half the price as the classic vibes from Squire. So I beat it up a little bit on the weaknesses. I will tell you some strengths though. Number one, it's Fender doing the Fender thing without any extra bells or whistles. I really can appreciate that. I like that it's just a traditional Fender Stratocaster with a vintage vibe to it. Three single coil pickups, everything kind of voiced and built though for a modern player, which is great. It still is a good price. It's not a great price, but it's a good price considering the rest of the overall guitar market. And I told you the voice of the guitar and the pickups are good. That definitely adds some high marks. I'll also tell you that the style and aesthetic, I love this new silver finish that they're doing exclusively on the Powell Ferro version. It'd be nice if they offered that on the Maple as well, but it kind of makes you wonder, are they trying to compete directly with Paul Reed Smith with that silver finish? It does look super, super sharp. But at the end of the day, it says Fender on the headstock. And although I told you that a better alternative might be the Silver Sky from Paul Reed Smith, it doesn't say Fender on the headstock and it's not a Stratocaster. At the end of the day, if you are looking for a solid kind of mid to entry level Stratocaster that does and sounds what a Strat is supposed to do, the Fender Player Series Stratocaster is really, uh, it will not steer you wrong. It also gives you plenty of opportunities for mods along the way. When we flipped up the pickguard and looked underneath, I'll also tell you, if you're someone who likes to mod these guitars, a lot of people like to buy this priced guitar and then do their own modding. One nice thing is that the body is already routed for a humbucker both in bridge and neck. That'll save you some time and trouble if you wanna add a humbucker in either position. So let us know what you think. Tell us what you thought of the sounds, the overall score, and tell us, are you going to be buying a Fender Player Series Strat? If so, click to buy using our link, and it doesn't just have to be that. If you're in the market for any new gear, Click to buy using our link. It really does support our channel and I really can't thank you enough for doing that. Remember to subscribe, like this video, drop a comment, and turn on notifications because we have at least three videos coming out every week and it's gonna be very valuable as you're out there looking for your next guitar. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you guys soon.